Good morning, everyone. My name's Anita Mascarenas. I'm Labor's candidate for SWAN. I'd love to um, acknowledge and introduce my fabulous federal and state colleagues, Anthony Albanese, Mark Butler, Mark McGowan and Amber J Sanderson. The thing that I'd point out here is that there's some incredible talent here and what WA needs is a partner in Canberra. My team and I, we've knocked on 40,000 doors in total and the thing that we've seen is that West Australians want a strong Medicare system. And the thing that I know is that only the Labor Party can deliver that. This Bentley Hospital is only six minutes drive from my home. It's incredibly important and we've got some exciting information we'd like to share. I'll hand over to my fabulous leader, Anthony Albanese. Well, thanks so much, uh, Zanita, and it's great to be back here uh, in Western Australia uh, with my friend, the Premier, Mark McGowan, and also Amber, and, uh, and Mark Butler, uh, our Shadow Health Minister, uh, for what is an important announcement here to have a $150 million commitment to capital here for a surgery centre for Perth. Uh, what this will do is deliver six new surgical theatres, two new procedure rooms, a 24-bed surgical ward and a new central sterilisation services department. This surgery centre will make an enormous difference. It will make a difference in terms of the Commonwealth working with WA under Mark McGowan based upon what is needed, making a difference to that capital infrastructure upgrade so that we reduce waiting times for elective surgery so that people can get the health care that they need when they need it. Medicare is at the heart of Labor's health agenda. We have had a series of Medicare announcements to strengthen Medicare and to strengthen the health system. The health system is what brought me into politics through my own personal experience. And I know the difference that a good health care system can have. We want to work with Mark McGowan with other state governments around the country to deliver better health outcomes. This announcement today is a practical announcement that will deliver on that capital upgrade, that will deliver particularly when it's needed arising out of the COVID pandemic. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Greg, yeah. good to see you on the trail, Greg, but we have some order here. And now I'd like to introduce the Premier, Mark McGowan. Uh, <laughs> you're very quick off the mark. Um, look, uh, just so you know, that what's, I think what's going to happen, I'll say a few words about this announcement, then I think Anthony will come back and answer all your questions, then I'll come back and do a COVID update for the local press and whoever wants any of that. Uh, so, but first of all, can I just uh, thank Anthony and the team for coming to Western Australia once again. Can I thank them for this important announcement for our state? Uh, what this will do is alleviate pressure on our hospitals. It will mean we have a major surgical facility here at Bentley Hospital. Uh, it will mean that uh, the uh, elective surgery uh, pressure will be reduced on our hospital system. It will mean thousands of extra surgeries can be conducted here at this surgery centre uh, in uh, the eastern suburbs. So uh, for all of the people, particularly in the eastern suburbs, but more broadly across Western Australia, this will reduce the pressure uh, on our hospitals. As we know, all over Australia the pressure on hospitals is enormous. Uh, every state is going through it, uh, making sure that there is additional state and federal investment into uh, providing those opportunities for surgery, particularly uh, the non-urgent surgery, so we can have the hospitals dealing with the urgent surgery, is an important initiative that we have worked cooperatively uh, with the federal opposition on. Uh, this will be half-funded, state, federal, uh, it'll uh, start construction, uh, we expect, within uh, 18 months to two years uh, and then uh, be finished uh, within, uh, or certainly in the first stage, within a couple of years after that. So uh, whilst it takes some years to plan and develop these things, naturally, uh, the ultimate outcome will be uh, an improvement in uh, what's uh, in, in the, uh, the surgery capability of Western Australia and particularly ensuring our hospitals can deal with uh, the more urgent cases. So we very much welcome this announcement. This is a major investment into health in Western Australia by uh, Anthony Albanese and Federal Labor and we're very pleased to partner on that. I'll hand over to uh, Anthony. Thanks very much, Mark. Tom, because he was polite. We, I, I, I've got a polite incentive scheme going on here, Greg. You, you'll, get the, you'll get the picture. <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry? Will you say clearly that your spending, your deficit will be higher under Labor than the Coalition? Last week you said the Coalition hadn't had their launch yet. Yeah. Are there specific targets for productivity under a Labor government? Is there some measure that we could have of how productivity will go up in the first what we have prioritised with our investments is investments that will boost productivity. So whether that's in nation building infrastructure, whether that be in our, uh, our Powering Australia plan, uh, which will see $52 billion of private sector investment, uh, we'll see 604,000 new jobs created, we'll see the economy grow in a sustainable way by taking advantage of the opportunity that's there from climate change action. Uh, whether it be our, our, our future Made in Australia plan. One of the things we want to do, and in the announcement that I made here uh, during the campaign launch, we put aside a billion dollars of our National Reconstruction Fund for value adding for resources. We see enormous opportunities in things like battery production and others. WA has such fantastic minerals. Uh, we need to, where we can, continue to export them, sure but where we can value add, boost productivity here as well. Our NBM plan uh, to make sure that we build on a rollout of fibre, 21st century technology, not copper from the last century, will boost productivity. And importantly, uh, after this visit, we'll be going to a childcare centre uh, in the electorate of Hasluck. Uh, one of the things that our childcare plan will do is boost productivity and boost workforce participation. Here, here, here. You've been saying all election that you'll be a safe pair of hot hands for the economy, that Labor will be fiscally responsible. There's now less than a week until the election, so when will Labor outline its prospects? One of the things that we have done this entire election campaign is with each policy, we announce what the costings are. The idea that we don't have costings out there is quite frankly absurd. Today's costing is $75 would be contributed from the federal Labor government and $75 million from the McGowan government. Greg, 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 because Greg was... Then he got... He, he, and then... You know, that, those, inv those investments will lead to higher productivity. Yes, so and the, will the, the or those investments. Well, you get to ask a question, then I get to answer it. That's the, o answer that's it. the other part of the deal here. You get to ask the question, I get to answer it. The question is uh, will there be higher productivity under Labor? The answer to that is well, if you want an answer, you've got to stop talking. OK, that's the deal. What we will have is a fiscally responsible policy. You can't say, on the one hand, Labor isn't announcing enough expenditure, enough big things, and on the other hand say that we're not being fiscally responsible, because we are. Everything we are investing in, everything we are investing in is about, is about boosting productivity. And in terms of the fiscal position, the other thing that I have said repeatedly, but I'll repeat it again, is that we will have Treasury and Finance go through an audit line by line to get rid of the waste and the rorts that this government have had. This government spent $70 billion between the mid-year economic forecast and the budget in March. $70 billion with no offsets. This government have established multiple funds. We don't know where all the money is in those funds. That's why Treasury and Finance will go through. We understand the need to have a fiscally responsible policy, which is why our investments are targeted at boosting productivity. Just here. Um, former RBA Governor Ian McFarlane gave a speech a few weeks ago where he said, if we are going to address the issue of housing whilst politically unpopular, there will need to be some drop in house prices. Now, you and the government have made the same criticism of each other's housing plans. You say the super plan will put up house prices. He said you're going to buy plan will put up house prices. Do you agree with the idea that we do need to see some sort of drop or at the very least a decline in the rapid rise we've seen in house prices to address the issue of affordability? 
And if so, don't you therefore need to do something to make sure when you're doing any policy that might increase demand, you're also increasing supply? Let's be very clear about the difference in the housing policies between what we have announced and what the government has announced. Uh, the government, in its desperation, has come up with a thought bubble uh, yesterday that, according to itself, has not been modelled. They have no idea what the impact will be, except that uh, Minister Hume belled the cat this morning. Minister Hume has said that it will put upward pressure on housing prices. That's what, that's what they've said. They've acknowledged that that's the case. The government now have a policy to cut super, to cut real wages of those on the minimum wage and to, and to increase the cost of living pressures on people who are doing it really tough at the moment. In contrast, our policy includes the establishment of a Housing Supply and Affordability Council, working with Mark McGowan and other state premiers and chief ministers on how we have a national strategy to increase supply of housing. The key is you've got to increase supply if you want to deal with some of the housing affordability issues. But in addition to that, we have a policy for 20,000 additional social housing dwellings, 10,000 uh, affordable housing dwellings for essential workers, emergency housing for women and children escaping domestic violence, remote housing policy and our help to buy scheme, which is based upon a scheme here in WA that has operated effectively for three decades, for three decades. The difference is as well that the policy that we announced, help to buy, was endorsed by Scott Morrison and other Liberals for a long period of time until we announced it and then they opposed it. Their policy, their policy that they announced yesterday has been opposed, has been opposed by their own ministers in their own government over a long period of time, whether it be Paul Fletcher or Susan Lay and others. And now they've come up with this plan that Sol Eslake has called the worst housing policy in decades. Claire. No, you only get one. You, you get one. You get one. As, as we have, uh, when we have announced policies, we've announced uh, the costings for them. We will announce, we will announce, we, we will put out all of the opposition's costings in the usual way, at the usual time frame, as oppositions have. Hang on, hang on. Well, we will put out all of our costings, as oppositions have, in the usual way, at the usual time frame. But we have, we have put forward our costings all the way through. We have had new announcements from the government uh, yes, uh, yesterday. Uh, we, I have also said, clearly indicated, uh, what we will do in government through the Department of Treasury and the Department of Finance. Thanks. I, I welcome a contest of ideas. Our policies are thought through, are focused at assisting people to buy, are focused on social housing, are focused on what works, such as uh, the WA scheme here. Uh, where a policy is a good idea, and uh, one of the issues that they came up with uh, yesterday, the extension of the downsizing policy, we welcomed. It's a good idea. This policy is not a good idea. This government, this government are at the same time that they're saying they support real wage cuts, are saying that they want to cut people's super. And the problem with that is, 
not just a, I've had a range of questions about fiscal responsibility. I'll give you this big tip. If you take super away from people, then you'll have higher deficits and bills from the government in the future. What super is about is making sure that people can retire with a decent income. That is the purpose of the superannuation system. It was designed to give people a comfortable retirement. If you gut people's super savings, that means down the track, more people dependent upon the pension, more pressure on budgets in the future. That's what it's about. That's what this debate is about. But this government, every opportunity they have to attack super, they do so. That is what they did consistently when they fiddled around and eventually they got dragged, kicking and screaming. I mean, the Oz would have had 20 articles about them not wanting to move the super up. Greg wrote most of them, probably. The truth is that they do every opportunity attack superannuation and particularly industry super, even though the return on industry super last year was, you know, Oz Super, companies like that produced about a 20% return. This year, this year the return is less, but it's still nearing double figures, the return. This is an attack on future savings. It's an attack on future generations. It's not about assisting people. At, at the back. Oh, yeah. You, you look at, you look at, well, commitments that are about improving the quality of life for people uh, are also uh, things that happen during election campaigns. Our, our, our major, well, if, if you don't think the arts community are, are worthy of any support, that's not a view that, that, that I hold. Our priority investments during this campaign, what's the largest investment? Uh, at, uh, at less, mind you, than was wasted on the subs deal that didn't lead to anything, uh, is childcare. What are our other significant investments? The National Broadband Network. What are our other significant investments? Increased skills through 465,000 fee-free TAFE places. They are our priorities. Our infrastructure investments, including those that we'll make here in WA. <laughs> And then, our plan is based upon plans that work, that we know work because it's been working here in WA for 30 years. In Victoria, in their model that they, they did, their trial, which has been supported. Uh, in the past by Scott Morrison, uh, since 2017. I'm advised uh, that about one in six of the people who've participated in that scheme have actually then bought out the government equity. It's given them the foot in the door of home ownership for low and middle income earners. That's why it's a good policy. We know it works. John? 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 They've been legislated, we support them, we stand by that. We don't support the Greens. I, I'm seeking to form government in my own right. Mr. Albany, Just here. Terry Butler has become the latest um, Queensland Labor MP to claim that a vote for the Greens would help reinstall Scott Morrison. Do you accept that that's simply not true? It may well. What, why would I accept that that's not true? Because the, the Greens... Greens because if the Greens hold the balance of power, there's no way they're back in the coalition. Well, the Greens formed a, a government in Tasmania with the Liberals. I want, I, I, I want people, I, I, what I'm interested in is electing Labor members of parliament. Electing Labor members of parliament and I want Terry Butler re-elected because she as environment minister will do more for the environment than any Green 
sitting next to keep Adam Bank Company ever will. You quoted to the left like earlier. You didn't quote everything he said. Let me just quote some of the rest of it. He said that um, anything which allows Australians to spend more on housing than they otherwise would, be it first home owner grants, stamp duty concessions, tax preferences for property investors, shared equity schemes, such as your one, anything that allows Australians to spend more on housing than they otherwise would result primarily in more expensive housing, not in more people owning homes. Do you disagree with him? I, I agree with our policy. Our policy, our, our policy, our policy is measured. It's targeted. It will make a positive difference. Together with our policies with the Housing Australia Future Fund, it will make a difference in terms of increasing supply and putting putting a roof over people's heads. I know, I know the benefit of a secure roof over your head. It's my life. It's how I have got to a position of the son of a single mum who grew up in public housing to be running for Prime Minister of this country. It gave me the confidence and security in life. And my first campaign, I spoke about this at the, the National Press Club, was against the privatisation of what I saw as my home, as my home. I want a comprehensive plan on housing. That is what, that is what Labor will deliver. Last one, Matt oh, and Josh. I have national security briefings all the time. What this Prime Minister always does is put his political interest first before the national interest. It's always about the politics. We were briefed on the Wednesday afternoon. The Prime Minister's office, as you well know, because you would have been one of them, went around that afternoon and briefed people in the gallery that I had been briefed on a significant announcement that would occur the next day. That didn't come from me. That came from the Prime Minister's office. The Prime Minister's office went around and said there was a briefing. What I did uh, was convene a meeting of the Shadow Cabinet and the, and, and the caucus. And we endorsed the position that I took to those bodies uh, within hours of the announcement. Uh, Labor and I say this in the state of the great John Curtin. Labor laid the foundations for the US alliance during the Second World War. When Australia turned to Labor in its darkest hour, we have been supporters of the US alliance ever since. And what I haven't done is ever release private text messages uh, between people, let alone between leaders of other countries uh, which this Prime Minister quite clearly has done. Uh, we were uh, briefed uh, just beforehand. Uh, the US administration, the, the information is out there uh, that uh, they expected uh, Labor to be briefed because this is an issue that doesn't go for a year or a term of Parliament. They expected there to be briefing and expected there to be a condition would be bipartisan support. And I make this point, even though Labor could not have been more clear, more decisive, or more certain about our support for AUKUS, this Prime Minister has continued to play politics and to suggest that that wasn't the case at each and every opportunity. The problem for this Prime Minister is that he's always looking for a conflict and a division. That's what he feeds off. He's never looking for agreement. It doesn't matter whether it's backing Clive Palmer against Mark McGowan. It doesn't matter whether it's on national security issues. It doesn't matter whether it's on other policy issues. It doesn't matter whether it's some of the responses to the pandemic. This bloke always looks for the fight, not for the solution. Australia can do better. Under my leadership, under my leadership, if we're successful on Saturday, I'll look to unite the country, whether it's big business and unions, whether it's small business and employees, 
whether it's the Commonwealth, states and local government working together for our common interest. That's what this country needs. Enough of, enough of this bloke, enough of the conflict fatigue that has set in. He can't change, he won't change, that's why people need to change the government. Josh. Yep. That's why you. That's why you get the bonus question. No. He. Well, this is an extension of an existing scheme, which is there. They're changing the the, the age rates for it. Uh, it's one. Uh, that is that is practical, uh, that we believe will assist people uh, at this time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Authorised by P. Erickson, ALP Canberra.